Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the day's matchup between the home team, St. John's Park of Shrewsbury, and the visiting team, Brockton Boston. Brockton High School, uh, excuse me, St. John's Park of Danvers, I'm sorry. Uh, Brockton High School would like to take this opportunity to encourage you to display good sportsmanship for everyone involved. Please do your part by showing respect to every spectator, athlete, coach, official involved in today's contest. Inappropriate behavior or language will not be tolerated and may result in your removal from the stadium. This game is being played according to the rules of the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. Now for your starting lineup for the visiting team brought in boxes. Number 20, senior midfielder Odier Montero. Number 13, sophomore midfielder Jalen DeRosa. Number 3, senior defender Claudio Mazzarani. Number 26, senior midfielder Moisir Ramos. Number 28, junior midfielder Mario Mendoza. 21, senior midfielder, Bradley Fugini. Number 15, junior defender, Paolo Ramho. Number 9, senior forward, Jonathan Rodgers. Number 18, junior forward, Leonardo Tixera. Number 25, sophomore midfielder, Eric Guido. Number 8, junior midfielder, a seven domes. Number 27, sophomore defender, Walton Mendes. Number six, senior captain defender, Brendan Gomes. Number 22, senior captain defender, Derek Tapino. Number four, senior forward, Claudia Mendes. Number two, junior midfielder, Leonardo Barrows. Number five, sophomore midfielder, Louis Spinola. Number 19, junior forward, Lincoln Sana. 23, junior midfielder, Philippe Pinto. Number 11, junior forward, Edson Lopes. Number 24, senior midfielder, Daniel Andrade. Number 7, senior midfielder, Brian DeLue. Number 17, senior forward, Riven Rogers. Number 10, senior captain, midfielder, Junior Gomes. Number 12, senior goalkeeper, Fabio Andrade. Number 15, senior goalkeeper, Dalton Rocha. Number 1, senior goalkeeper, David Isaac. And number 30, junior goalkeeper, Seth Anderson. Head coach of Brockton High School, Hermino Furtado. And now for the St. John Prep of Danvers. Number zero, senior keeper, Sam Buckley. Double zero, junior goalkeeper, Christian Buckley. Number two, senior midfielder, Andrew Gimbalski. Number three, senior defender, Andrew Wilson. Number four, senior defender, Trevor Roy. Number five, senior defender, Tommy Granada. Sixth senior defender, Dan Muir. Number seven, senior midfielder, Mitch Collins. Number eight, senior midfielder, Will Tulare. Number nine, senior forward, Steven Yakia. Number ten, senior midfielder, Brian Brennan. Number eleven, junior midfielder, Will Andrews. Number twelve, junior forward, Sam Smith. Number 13, senior midfielder, Eric Christensen. Number 14, sophomore forward, Ethan Ambrose. Number 15, sophomore midfielder, Zach Davis. Number 16, junior forward, John Campbell. Number 17, sophomore midfielder, Gabe McGee. Number 18, junior defender, Caleb Gallagher. Number 19, junior forward, John Markowski. Number 20, senior forward, Chris Jennings. Number 21, junior midfielder, Stephen Wehan. Number 
22, senior forward, Jacob Smith. Number 23, junior defender, Jake Ferretta. Number 25, junior midfielder, Will Duffy. Number 26, junior defender, Peter Danis. And number one, sophomore keeper, John Goodman. Head coach of St. John Club Sanders, David Rawl. Now, if everybody could please turn towards the flag for the playing of our national Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium, and today it hosts the MIAA Division I State Semifinals. Mm. That's a mouthful all in itself. <laughs> yeah. Between the visiting Brockton Boxers and the St. John's Prep Eagles, these two teams, one loss between them in the regular season, and that's going to be the story of the night. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, as always, alongside my broadcast partner, Roberto Neves. Roberto, 15-0-3 for the home team, St. John's Prep Eagles. 15-1-2. Those aren't counting tournament wins for either side for the Brockton Boxers. And it's going to be a chest match, chest match, 15 rounds in the heavyweight division, throwing haymakers all night for these two teams. Yeah, well, coming St. John's Prep coming from the North Division, winning their Catholic uh, Conference coming in the North Division, being the number one team, and Brockton coming from the South Division, being the number one team. This is going to be a very heavy, heavy fight, kind of like Holyfield and Mike Tyson swinging at each other. Well, the interesting part of this St. John's with the better win percentage gives them the home field quote unquote advantage. They're wearing their home white jerseys with blue and black trim. The boxers, on the other hand, in their visiting black jerseys with red and white trim. Yeah, well, it's good that um, it's good to uh, see that the MIA uh, follows with their rules, saying that regardless if Brockton's in here, they're still away. <laughs> they're going to be the away team in St. John's. So maybe it is a away. neutral site. <laughs> so the key word of the night for the boxers is consistency, and that leads us to the starting goaltenders for the visiting boxers. Yes. It's Fabio Andrade. And for the Eagles, it is Christian Buckley, the junior. 
Well, yeah. Well, I see. I see why Herminio goes with um, Fabio Andre. He's been doing great in this postseason. Every time he's been starting, um, he played and finished out a very tight game on on Saturday for winning the section uh, their division. Um, he played an excellent game. So um, if the keeper has the hot hand. Keep him out there. I I really don't know as much of it. Christian Buckley over here. I know that his brother. Um, Cam Buckley got hurt on the Brooklyn game um, um, to get to this point, so they they um, trusted in his brother to go out there and you know lead the St. John's to, um, prep team to the poor victory. A very large crowd here at Marciano Stadium. <laughs> yeah, very. The winner of this game, of course, will go on to face the winner of Longmeadow and Marlboro. That game will be Saturday night in either Worcester or Fitchburg. And if it's Brockton, we'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. It was a great switch. Nice switch in the play of the field. This is going to be a very intense game. We've got to see what Brockton does. You know, speaking with uh, Coach Arminio um, before the game, he's been uh, expressing to his boys to keep calm, spread the ball out wide, I know you want to be excited to go ahead and bring it down the middle, but that's not our game. Our game is to go ahead and control the ball, pass the ball around, and find your teammates in the outside. Right off the bat, it seems like Buckley has a very good leg on him, sending that one mm -hmm. about 60 yards up turf. Yeah, Brockton has to adjust, make sure that their defense adjusts to the punts. Now, Boxer tripped up in free kick. F quick restart and a little bit off the mark was Depina. Oh, a little push from the back. I see that. Good job. Play advantage. Great job. Let's see now what Brockton can do. Let's go ahead and switch the side. St. John's. It's going to be interesting as far as formations go. St. John's committed to a 4-3-3 formation. Mm. Brockton, on the other hand, well, they're, not, they're not really committing. They said, well, we might start off with a 5-3-2. If we see something we don't like, we'll adjust to a 3-4-3. A three, three. Brockton's ready to adjust to, to different situations as they happen. Yeah. Well, what Coach Emmanuel say stated to him, they, they're like water. They just go with the flow. Whatever works for them, let's go with the flow. Let's keep the basics, though, in soccer. Make sure that we pass the ball out wide and spread the team out. Um, coming in the 4-3-3 formation, that means they're going to be offensively heavy, heavy tacking St. John's prep on the boxers. So boxers defense better step up and, uh, you know, I mean, adjust to, to the pressure that they get. St. John's with a throw in on the far side. Eagles, a team we used to see in the regular season, and then. They were dropped from the schedule. We also used to see them in football every season. Mm. And that also got dropped. Thankfully for that oh. one. And here's an opportunity for Leonardo Texera on sides. Texera with a Ooh. shot through the football uprights. And that was something that plagued the boxers, Roberto, in the last matchup against Needham, the uh, Division I South title game, to bring the boxers to this point. 11 offsides in that game, five in a span of 15 minutes to start. And Coach Romino had a good message for to kind of stem that problem. Yeah, I mean, it's just more lack of focus, you know what I mean? Lack of effort, getting um, back when you lose the ball. And um, they just, 11 offsides, I think they just got a little two ANC to go up to, to the front. Um, Texera wasn't playing really his game that day. Um, but, you know, mistakes happen. And great teams, what they do is to find a way to win, and they did. And when they found a way to win, uh, Coach Arminio just talked to them and just let them know, listen, this can't happen. We're getting higher and higher in these levels, and it's going to be harder and harder. So we need to limit these mistakes and make sure that we keep our focus. St. John's Prep with an opportunity down on the boxer's end of the field. Brockton able to clear it out of play off of one of the Eagles. Very nicely, boxer thrown. Well, St. John's to get to this point around the table in the Division I North bracket. First defeating the 16 seed Newton North. 
deflected. Tigers, and this shot Ooh. is saved by Andrade off the post. It'll be a corner kick. That was a bad clearance from Brockton. They just didn't know where they were. They kicked the ball regardless, and they deflected off the St. John's prep player. And, uh, you know, one thing that St. John needs to do, they need to go ahead and in order to win this game, they got to capitalize on Brockton's mistakes, and that's what I've been preaching this whole postseason for any opposing team that comes against Brockton. Brockton's do give up mistakes. You've got to capitalize it when they do. Brian Brennan taking the corner kick for the Eagles. Sending it high across the box, and it's headed out. For another, and it'll be a corner kick corner. from corner the other corner. side for the Eagles. Story for the Eagles this game, Steven Yakita, number nine, has scored in 18 straight games for St. John's. Uh, it seems very promising for St. John's. I guess that they're going to go ahead and uh, try to target Mr. Keenan over there, just to make sure that you know we can go ahead and get a ball in there against this strong Brockton team. Good save, jumping up for Fabio Andrade. He sends it back Excellent save. towards midfield. Oh. St. John's is going to have a free kick from the 49-yard line of the boxers. So St. John's, 4-1 to win against Newton North. Four to nothing win against Medford, and then in the, the North semis, a three to one win against Framingham, and then the game against Brookline in the North uh, finals, a one nothing win against Brookline, in which their starting goal goaltender Cam Buckley was injured. It was a tough injury, I guess, and um, I know I know the feeling of getting injured and not being able to go ahead and play in a very important game, but. Uh, one thing that St. John perhaps have is he has his brother with him, and, and his brother is going to go ahead and try to win this game for him. Injuries kind of plaguing the Eagles as their senior captain, Andrew Wollston, is also out of this matchup, mm. tweaking his knee in it's, the early rounds of the playoffs. It's very tough. You got a, a quick turnover. I mean, they brought them just played on Saturday. They had Sunday day off, Monday to go out there and practice a little bit and get do some game studying. And now they have a game on Tuesday. Just a very quick turnover. You need sometimes, during the regular season, you have a little bit of time to let your body rest. But in the playoffs, you just got to grind it out. It's going to be a free kick for the boxers. Brockton on the other side has run the table in the south bracket, dominating their first couple of matchups. 8-1 to win over Marshfield, 6-1 to win over King Phillip, 4-1 to win over Silver Lake in the semis. And then, of course, the one to nothing win over Needham mm. in the sectional final. Yeah. Brockton. And those games got progressively closer as the tournament went on. Of course. Oh, there comes a breakaway for Brockton on the outside. Oh. Yeah, well, you know, of course the games are going to get a little closer when it gets later on. Every team is going out there and playing the hardest. You know, every level, like I said earlier, is is going to get more intense and more intense. These teams are going to go out there. Everybody wants this championship title to be called the number one team in the state. You know, and if Brockton wants to go out there and, and do it, they have to figure out other ways to put the ball in the back of the net and win these games. Just throwing from DeRosa straight out the other side and out of play goal kick for the Eagles. Ten minutes into the first half, still scoreless between Two heavyweights, the 15-0-3 St. John's Prep Eagles and the 15-1-2 Brockton Boxers. Yeah, Brockton's looking like they're playing a uh, pretty far back line. Kind of realize that the goalkeeper does have a leg. Offsides called. Offsides called from uh, the assistant judge on the outside. Great call. He was offside. Just a smidge, but it was offside. Good call. Nice job on the Brockton defensive line moving up. Some interesting uh, pregame conversations on the field. Yeah. The refs approached us as we were talking to Brockton coach Furtado. And I said, well, we got some questions for you too. What do you guys think about the three-ref system as opposed to the two-ref? <laughs> and he said, well, the two-ref system is great when you know your partner. <laughs> and you know where he's going to be and you know kind of have an idea of what he's going to call. Yeah. Because then you can kind of try to match your your officiating to that. Yeah. He said the three ref system is great because there's no part of the field that's uncovered. That is true. You got eyes all over the place. 
you know, one last thing that they said as well, too, <laughs> that they really like the four-man system. <laughs> Absolutely. It makes it really easy. <laughs> then now you got an official stop keeper of the time <laughs> and substitutions as well, too. A oh, great pass. St. John's Prep, nice controlling the ball. That's the Prep Eagles with an opportunity. The cross is going to be broken up by it was Mascarenas on the far side. Yeah. Was, um, number seven. Uh, Mitch Collins over there putting pressure on um, the boxers' defense in the in the backside. One thing I've been noticing about uh, St. John's and against other teams that Brockton face is that they're actually really putting pressure on the boxers. They're actually attacking the boxers are are having a difficult time trying to move the ball up and um, trying to go ahead and attack their their end, um, and that's very unusual. Corner kick for Fabio Andrade of the boxers. Brockton not knowing a ton about their opponent in the St. John's Prep Eagles. We asked head coach Furtado what it's like getting prepared for the unknown. And he said, well, when we play our game, nobody can beat us. Essentially, we asked him that when we defeated, or when Brockton rather, defeated the King Philip Warriors in the earlier rounds of the South Sectional Tournament. It says, when we play our game, nobody can beat us. We're unstoppable. But when we let teams get into our heads, that's when the games are a little bit closer. Yeah. Well, you know, Brockton, Brockton needs to just keep their calm down. And, you know, teams are always going to try to get into other teams' heads and other players' heads. They want you to lose your cool. They want you to make a mistake so they can go ahead and capitalize on it and that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to these type of games and these type of scenarios, uh, especially when it gets closer to the championship round. I'm sure the New England Patriots get it all the time. <laughs> a little bit easier to get film if you're the Patriots, however. <laughs> oh, here now goes. Brockton with a shot and an excellent save by Buckley. It was a great save by Buckley. It's Texero out in front, launching the shot into the legs. And as we saw against the Needham Rockets, it, one goal could be the difference. One shot could very well be the difference in a game, especially when you're this deep into the tournament. Yeah. I mean, with St. John's, I think, I was speaking with the coach uh, earlier before the game, he, he's thinking attacking. He's going to try to attack the Brockton team, try to get something going in, try to score a goal, and, um, you know, Maybe score another one, but if not, try to hold that 1-0 lead against them if they do get it. Brockton looked kind of out of sorts last game against the Rockets, not scoring until about seven minutes into the second half. And that one from Daniel Andrade was the difference in that game. Only held a few times this season beyond the first 10 minutes, let alone an entire half. And St. John's has accomplished that feat as we're about 15 minutes into half number one. Yeah, I think uh, someone owes a lot, somebody a lot of hot chocolates that game, I think. <laughs> I do, I do. I, I made a friendly wager with the Needham broadcasters Ooh. as Rodriguez was taken down. No whistle. And now St. John's prepped the other way with an opportunity. It's a foot race, and it's cleared out by Paolo Romalo. It'll be a prep throw-in from the far side. As so I made a friendly wager with the Needham broadcasters, said Brockton's going to score in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> You're the 11th seed. You've got no chance. It's going to be a blowout. Of course, they scored seven minutes in to the second half. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well like I said, it's uh, when it comes to this type of level and this, this type of... Uh, you know, scenario in the playoffs. You know, teams are going to come out there coming out hard and wanting to win the game. So, um, big, 
big uh, big credit to the Rockets as well too. Congratulations for making it that far and being the finalists as well too. They were a good team, um, and it was just an unfortunate um, mistake that they did that the Rockets um, took advantage and and um, put the ball in the back of the net. It's going to be Brian Brennan taking the corner again. This one off of a couple of heads out in front and out the other side. It'll be another corner, the second corner kick for the Eagles and the second one that has resulted in another corner kick. So, so far they had four corner kicks. So far Brockton's had four corner kicks and referees just telling Coach Arminio to get uh, get back to his side of, of the of the bench. Playing short. Short on the shot all the way through and saved by a leg out in front. I don't think it got through to Andrade, but now Brockton the other way. Rodriguez with a lot of room to run. St. John's prep is backpedaling and uh, now sent through and a little bit too far and almost picked off by, who was that, Daniel Andrade out in front. Preps goalkeeper Christian Buckley came out to make the nice save. Great job from Buckley. Great job. I think his brother is very proud. <laughs> uh, from Brockton over here. They, oh, mass missed touch from St. John's. Now a shot, and it's another save for Buckley. Oh, see, Buckley's um, putting it in work today. He clocked in this card. That was the second shot that Texera took that just went straight to the keeper. Great save from Buckley. We got to get Texera going. If Brockton has any hope of putting the ball in the back of the net the first half, Texera has to go ahead and turn those turmoils on his, in his wheels and get that speed going and that power shot going as well, too. Spinola just came in. Uh, speaking with Coach Herminio earlier, Spinola was hurt during on Saturday, and so Coach said that he was going to just try to work him in um, throughout the game. Him and the senior captain, Junior Gomes, as well. Yeah. Both coming off the bench today. Smart decision from Coach. You know, don't, don't want to start injured players. So it's Brockton trying to get the offensive-minded Louis Spinola involved. And Boxer's taking their time, keeping their calm. Good stop and go for Mascarenas on the near sideline. He's got some fancy footwork going and still fighting for it, able to punch it through a couple of Eagle defenders, and St. John's eventually able to clear it back out towards midfield. Yeah. That was a okay clearance from Brockton. Needed to be a little bit smarter. He had time to go ahead and control the ball and to make a better pass. Instead, he rushed it and tried to kick it. It just popped up in the air, and one of his teammates caused a foul, and now it's St. John Prep's ball. That's a great job. Nice head. Jonathan. Oh, That's Rodriguez taken down, and it's going to be a free kick for the boxers, and there's gonna be a conversation between the official and number five, Tommy Granada, the senior captain, who took down Gomes and, or Rodriguez rather, and Brockton's couple hundred referees in attendance want a card, and they're not gonna get it. He's actually showed up, a pretty good show out for um, Brockton boys right now for the team, good job. This one sent in, and Brockton with an opportunity. It's loose, and a couple of excellent saves for Buckley. And a foul against the boxers who made contact with the goalkeeper. Buckley. Yeah, very firm warning from the referee on um, the St. John player that took out the Brockton player, letting them know, like, hey, listen, I understand. You know, you don't want to go ahead and be the person that gets beat, but you got to learn how to play the game the correct way. A 
it's going to be a push off against the Eagles. So Brockton with a free kick from about seven yards inside of midfield. 18 minutes to go. We got a uh, St. John's prep player getting warmed up in the halfway line, ready to get substituted in. It's number 13, Eric Gustafsson. Gustafsson. Excellent oh. free kick. It's deflected, and oh. it's going to be picked up by Buckley. It was going wide, but Buckley to make sure no boxers could get to it. Yeah, I apologize. It I apologize to all the St. John prep uh, fans out there if I butchered um, some of your players' names. but There's some tough names on this list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought Brockton had some tough names. Nice job. Tries controlling the ball, playing the ball backwards. Opening Brock up some space. St. John's able to answer in front of their own bench. Back to Mascarenos, who pops it up for the self pass. Now sending it ahead to Junior Gomes. Gomes showing no ill effects of the injury. Now it's on right up to Mascarenos. Yeah, Mascarenos is playing great. I love how the defense is playing up top, playing high pressure on, on the. Oh, oh nice pass. Now it's at the head, and it's. Oh, nice pass. Out here, Montero. And it's this. gonna be a corner kick for the boxers. Mr. Corner Kick Specialist over there. Odair Montero. Action. This is this is his corner. <laughs> Curving it out towards midfield. Three goals off corner kicks during the regular season for Montero. Countless Time stop. assists. Time stop. Referee going ahead and just giving a conversation with them. Seeing, a, seeing him uh, bumping the keeper. You cannot obstruct the keeper. You can keep your position, but you can't obstruct the keeper. You can't just move around him and keep your body in front of him. And uh, the referee's going to call it nine out of ten times obstruction if uh, he sees that happening. Giving a fair warning to uh, the boxer player. So it's Montero to take the corner kick. All right. Keep the clock starts again. This one sent high and wide, and Brockton will have possession now, trying to turn it around. Mm. Well, I spoke with uh, Odier's uh, older brother, Joselito um, Montero, and uh, I just explained to him. I was like, "Did you talk to him about that goal that he missed on Saturday?" He said, "Yes, I did. I told him that he has to keep the ball down. And he has to lean over it and not pop the ball up in the air." It's the reason why they missed that goal. He leaned his, ba his body back and he popped the ball up in the air and hit it off the post. <laughs> Wide open net and Montero, not going to say shanked it, but was about six inches off. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Number 13 coming in right now for St. John's prep. Nice. Eric Gustafson into the game, the senior midfielder for the Eagles. Now we're starting to see the little wave coming in between. I think it's fairly matched. St. John's had the ball over in Brockton's side for a little bit. Now Brockton's having the um, ball over in St. John's side a little bit. Let's see how it plays out. It was a nice high throw in from the boxers, but not a direct throw in. Served right into this the box. This one sent in. Could be trouble, and it's picked off by Buckley. Good job, Buckley. Buckley's working hard today. If Odair Montero is the boxers corner kick and free kick specialist. Jalen DeRosa is their throwing specialist. <laughs> oh yeah, that little kid can go ahead and throw that ball about halfway across the field. Fifteen minutes to go here in the first half. Still deadlocked at zero goals for the St. John's Prep Eagles and the Brockton Boxers in the Division I state semifinal the winner of which will go on to play the winner of Marlboro and Longmeadow. The game happening concurrently to this one out at Westfield State. It's gotta be it. The oh. title game will be on Saturday Eagles evening at either Worcester State University or Fitchburg State. Brockton Substitution. Uh, 
was Lindo Mendy, a sophomore defender, coming in. Um, taking number 15 out. Um, Paulo Romalo. Paulo Romalo. Brockton changing up some of their defense, opting for more pressure in the midfield area. I'm thinking that maybe uh, Carcho Mino seen that Paulo wasn't too fast enough for the kid in the outside, so he put a fast kid in the outside, a defensive, defensive kid. One thing, though, he's a sophomore, so hopefully he doesn't make any sophomore mistakes. Now an opportunity in the middle of the field and popped up and now headed. Now Brockton with an opportunity, breaking through with a goal for the Boxers! Leonardo Texera out in front. It's going to be unassisted because it went off a couple of St. John's prep eagles. But Brockton is up with 13 minutes to go in the first half. There we go. Brockton go ahead, putting the goal in there with a great job from Reven, controlling the ball, giving a nice little pass off to Leonardo. Actually, a little deflection off of a little bit of St. John's prep player, but then Leonardo controlled the ball, seeing it, seeing the goalkeeper coming out. Quick reaction with a toe poke right eight. inside the net. Great job. Good job, Brockton. Talk about an icebreaker for the Brockton boxes. We've seen we've seen it both ways this season. One goal can open the floodgates. One goal could be the difference in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, the difference between the Saint, um, this game right now and uh, the Rockets is that Brockton didn't score in the first half, so... Maybe that was the reason why they didn't, wasn't able to go ahead and open those floodgates in the second half. They scored in the second half. Now that they scored in the first half, so let's see how the second half goes with them. Usually they come out there coming heavy on the second half and putting some goals in the back of the net, at least three or, two, or four. And this one is sent high and wide from the St. John's Prep Eagles. Twelve and a half to go now in the first half. And Brockton's up one nothing. Ask for your apologies in advance if I look at the scoreboard and say that the boxers are trailing. St. John's is home. So St. John's is the home team in this matchup. So even on the scoreboard, it's the boxers that are listed as the guest. And it's okay. causing a lot of confusion here in the stadium. So it's Brockton one and St. John's nothing. The goal listed under guest on the scoreboard. It's messing a few people up here. Once again, clarification. Brockton High School is the guest team at this venue. And St. John Prep is the visiting team, is the home team student. So they will be the boxes out on the scoreboard. Now free kick for the boxers from about 50 yards up. It's going to be taken by Derek DePina. It's going to be an uh, interesting free kick. I see now that the boxers is actually attacking more over the St. John's prep. The last first 15 minutes. Oh, great this Could be dangerous. Deflected out in front. And St. John's able to clear it out. And it's going to be off of the boxers. So a goal kick for... Eagles goalkeeper Christian Buckley the junior Buckley's playing a great job that goal was definitely not his fault it was just a great placement from the boxes um, he's doing an excellent job out there for St. John's here's Leo Texera coming up again winning it great job trying to use his body oh I think he got hurt there's indeed a boxer down and a yellow card for the Eagles. It's number five, the captain, Tommy Granada, who's going to have to go off the field. And Granada is visibly frustrated with that call. And I guess the coach in uh, St. John's is not very happy with that. He's going to tell him to keep it cool. He's losing, he's losing too much. Now St. John's 
head coach David Kroll is going to get a clarification Ten from the up. official. Substitution number six, Sam Muir. Sam Muir going to come in for the carded Granada. And we still have a boxer down at about the 10 yard line. And it's time to call out our uh, favorite trainer in Rockton Boxer's history, Jerry, Jerry Connor. Connor. And Jerry's been there for a very long time. She's awesome. She's a great athletic trainer for the Brockton organization and uh, appreciate her services a lot. Injuries tend to come more often when the temperature drops. And it is 34 degrees on the field right now. Seven mile an hour wind gusts to the north. Other than that, perfect night. 67% humidity. 29 degree dew point. And Coach Crowell is still going at the refs. Just wondering what's going on. It's taking so long right now. <laughs> if I'm Brockton, I'm, I'm asking the refs to back up this St. John's wall to the 10 yards. Oh, definitely. He's definitely going to be calling. And he it. is. Thank God that they had these hash marks now, you know what I mean? Sort of they, don't, they don't have the, the disappearing foam that they use in FIFA. No, no. And the reason why is because sometimes it can... Oh, nice cross. Ooh, this one save. picked off by Buckley, who has absolutely 100% been the difference in this one. Very big, huge difference in this one. Um, going back to what you were saying with the foam is that... Um, what I, I heard is that the foam is... Except for grass type things, if you try to put it on turf, it will change the color of the the, the turf. So, <laughs> so I, I I don't think Brockton wants to go ahead and see little patches and walls and stuff and lines on the field. Number twelve, Sam Smith, not to be confused with the singer, <laughs> now on the pitch for the Eagles. There's an attack going for boxers right now. Ooh. Silly foul from the boxes. They need to calm down. Spinola called for that one. Ten minutes to go in the first half, and the boxers lead it one to nothing over the St. John's Prep Eagles in the Division I state semifinal. Excellent block right off of his forehead for was that Rodriguez? <laughs> he doesn't feel that at all. And it's going to be offsides against St. John's. I think they had. Three players offsides on that one. Yeah, well, one of the guys went offside. He was in an offside position. Then he went back into an onside position, but it was too late because when the ball was released, he was already in the offside position. That's why the referee in the outside was going like a little rainbow type thing because he was in an offside position first. Free kick for Fabio Andrade all the way out of his net to take this one. One thing about St. John Prep. Oh. There's a boxer down right at midfield. Are we going to see another card here? And it is a yellow card. Two on the night now for the Eagles. This one's going to number two, Andrew Dembowski. And he's going to be sent off. Andrew Dembowski. And this one is now St. John's captain is going to have a word with the official. I think that is Granada up front. St. John needs to calm down and not get if too I'm St. John's, up. I'm calling a timeout right now. Yeah, well, it's the been coach two cards in the last five minutes. You gotta get the, the team under control and I understand things tend to happen and both of those cards might not have been worthy of cards but you gotta tell your team get under control. Don't give the refs a reason to call a foul or, or give you a card. Because this is dangerous territory for Derek DePina and the Brockton Boxers. Yeah. And well, a couple of cards can be the difference in games, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you know what I mean? If Now if that guy goes back out on the pitch again, does another foul in there, Unintentional, but this one in and dangerous in an excellent save by Buckley. It's going to be a corner kick. 
off of like a helicopter kick. <laughs> it wasn't really a bicycle, but really a sideways bicycle. I'm calling it the helicopter kick. The helicopter kick. I like it. I like it. Odie Montero sending it in in Buckley. I might, I might have to give the early call. I did it last <laughs> game where Needham's goalkeeper, Owen Nally, was the game ball midway through the second half. Edson lopes into the game. He has got some prowess on the offensive side of the field. I might have to give it to Buckley. Yeah. Buckley's um, been having some great saves Thank right now. Thank you. <laughs> Buckley's been having a great job and great game. Hopefully they don't, um, hopefully he doesn't let him down. He's got to keep on playing solid like he's been doing right now. And going back with those two yellow cards, if you go ahead and put those kids back, back onto the pitch and they do a silly foul that is not deserving of the yellow card, but you already have one and they get another one, they're a red card and that will be ejected out of the game. And that's something that St. John's cannot afford against this Brockton team. So it's been two yellow cards for the Eagles. Oh. Hey. Miss Brockton's going to earn the call here. Seems like uh, St. John's is a very chippy and um, aggressive team. One nothing boxers with six twenty to go. So the strategy for St. John's might be try to get under the boxers' skin. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, but the the players that are getting the cards are the the questions. Two starters. One is Andrew Dombowski, and the other is the senior defender Tom, Tommy. Tommy Granada. Both seniors too. Both seniors, I, I think they uh, <laughs> are trying to. <laughs> I think Dubowski uh, got confused with what type of football it was. You know, this is the type of football you use your feet. You don't have to lower your shoulder down and Lower and the shoulder, the lower the boom, and gain a few extra yards? <laughs> yeah, definitely not the same type of football. But, uh. You know, just, you know, great job from Coach Arminio. He was probably going to go into the second half talking to his boys, letting them know, like, hey, you guys, they're going to be physical. They're going to try to get in our skin. They're going to try to go ahead and get it up off our game. Let's keep our focus. Keep on playing the way we're playing. And let's put another ball in the back of the net. And we saw a very physical affair here a couple, actually about a month ago against the Dartmouth Indians. That was a 5-1 to one victory for the Boxers, a game in which the officials didn't really help out the physicality, and Dartmouth just was almost launching themselves into the Boxer players. I don't want to say it was dirty, but it certainly wasn't clean play by the Indians. Well, you know, oh, here comes a quick counterattack against, against the Boxers and St. John's. Great job of the boxers controlling it. The Good. thing is, you know, people think, and, and, and especially around here in America that I see, uh, Americans, oh, great job. Oh, nice job. This one's going to go just wide. It will be a corner kick. And, uh, Americans, they like to play with a lot of physical contact. Uh, they love it. They they like that feeling. They feel like if you're physical and and. And, like, if you look at American football, you can look at uh, hockey as well, too. All this is very physical sports, and they and they love it, you know. And this type of sport, ooh, great job. Nice goal kick run. is deflected out. Goal kick for the Eagles. Now 3.40 to go in the first half. If you look at it, though, in this type of sports, I mean, it, yeah, soccer, you have some bumping, you know. I mean, you do have some grind, grabbing, but... It's not about being physical. It's about being finesse and trying to get around the person and, and play as a team. 
and that's how you're really going to go ahead and win games. And that's what Brockton's figured out. Brockton's figured that out and this year with the, the group of kids. And look how far they've been going so far. Now it's Gomes stepping up from midfield and a call against St. John's from about, call it 20 yards out from net. Yeah, there's definitely a push again from uh, the St. John's player, number 13, Eric Gustafsson. Uh, Gustafsson, you know, he just came and literally pushed him from that. Depina's going to take this kick from about 20 yards out. Curving in, and another excellent save by Buckley. <laughs> Buckley Buckley's Buckley. performance has just been unreal tonight. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm sure his brother is, is really excited to see his performance like this. And uh, I think a couple of college um, coaches are kind of looking at this performance as well, too. Oh, great job. Nice clearance. Nice. Two minutes to go in the half. Official time kept, on the, time field. Will be kept on the field. The boxers still leading it one to nothing. Two yellow cards for the St. John's Prep Eagles. This call is going to go against the boxers. Quick restart for St. John's. Yeah, referee missed the call, and he gave the call back to St. John's on that little ticky-tacky play. Oh, great cross. This one is going to go out of play, and a goal kick for the Boxers. So going into the half, Mad Dog, let me ask you something. I'm going to reverse the, the roles over here. Going into the half, what do you think that St. John Prep's coach is going to be talking about? to uh, his players. If I'm, this, I'll give it to you both ways. If I'm the St. John's coach, I'm saying, listen, don't try to get physical. We're not going to win that game. It's clear we don't need any more cards than we already have. We don't need to give the boxers any offensive opportunities. They've got enough firepower as it is. Calm down. If I'm Coach Furtado, I'm saying keep trying to draw prep fouls and keep trying to give them cards. Don't let it get out of hand and keep up with the offensive opportunities because eventually Christian Buckley, as good as he has been so far, he's going to break down. He's going to get tired. He's going to get cold. The boxers have to keep testing Christian Buckley until the floodgates open. I agree. Totally agree, Mad Dog. Great job. Well, it's one nothing at halftime of the MIAA State Semifinal between the St. John's Prep Eagles and your Brockton Boxers. And the Boxers, the difference is Leonardo Texera unassisted. Roberto, what would you see on the goal for Brockton? Oh, uh, what I seen was that um, Brockton came out there. They came out strong. They took... Uh, they took them on one-on-one -on -one and, um, you know, kind of took a shot, deflected off of some, a couple of St. John's players, and then uh, Leonardo was there to go ahead and clean it up. So uh, great job from Leo. He needed, he needed that, especially a bad, not bad game, but an okay game on Saturday that he had. It's good to get his confidence back up and, with that goal and for Brock the Boxers. Well, it's one nothing Boxers over the Eagles for the right to play in the state final against either Longmeadow or Marlboro. And we're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action. There should be plenty of it right after this. Green hat. Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt. Blue shirt. Yellow shirt. Oops. <laughs> Red pants, green pants, oops. <laughs> Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. 
Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key? is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Armand Colombo Field here at Rocky Marciano Stadium, where today we play host to the MIAA State Semi final between the St. John's Prep Eagles and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, Roberto Neves. Roberto, it's one nothing Boxers after what turned into a very physical, mm. kind of chippy, but on one side of the field first half. Yeah, I mean, St. John Prep seems like they had the Boxers uh, for a little bit in the beginning of the 15 minutes of this of the first half, and then uh, I don't know, the boxers just came back out there and I guess they went, got into St. John's Prep's head and got them a little bit, you know, frustrated that they're not, they're not moving the ball the well, as well as they, they usually do during the season and through this postseason. Uh, great job from the boxers for doing that. And, um, oh, offsides here called. against the Eagles. A little story of the first half, two yellow cards given to the mm. Eagles. Those going to Andrew Dombowski. And the senior captain, Tommy Granada. Yeah, very tough. Very tough yellow cards. If you're the boxers, what do you have to do to to keep the field tilted in that manner and maybe even get a few more cards to the Eagles? Just keep on playing the way they've been playing. I mean, honestly, they haven't been playing anything different than... Here's a this one away could be St. trouble John. as a shot broken up. And St. John's is kind of scrambling, trying to regain composure here. Boxer goes down, and it'll be a Brockton free kick. So, like I was saying, is that um, boxers just got to keep on playing the games they've been playing. It, it hasn't changed throughout the whole postseason, and um, you know what I mean. And it shouldn't because it's been working. But you know, I think St. John's is just looking and seeing that they're playing a really good team, and that you know they're trying to adjust to it, but they just don't know what to do <laughs> to adjust to it. They're trying to keep the boxers out, away from their end, um, away from their attacking end, and. Um, keep it in there and at the boxes end but in the boxes are not giving up and they're, they're fighting hard well the rule I just heard and it's kind of interesting that we're at this point that we can talk about this but if St. John's gets four yellow cards they forfeit really MIAA rules wow as Buckley makes another save so I mean, we're only two yellow. I mean, I say only; they're not that common. But two yellow cards for the Eagles came in a two-minute span in the first half. Yeah, uh, if I was uh, the coaches, um, you know, from St. John's, I would definitely. Ooh, oh, that's he's offsides. He's on offside position. No offsides, not the call. In an excellent save by Buckley, loose. No, it didn't go in. 
we got to get the uh, the FIFA goal line technology <laughs> on that one. I think that one crossed. Hey, Kevin, do you hear that? FIFA goal line technology. We need it. <laughs> now Brockton right back in, pressuring again. And this one's going to go well wide. Three minutes in, Brockton already with a handful of shots. Buckley was phenomenal in the first half, officially credited with seven saves in the first half, but it seemed like he was involved a lot more than that. Oh, yeah, well, Buckley's been um, holding St. John um, a little bit of glimpse and hope against this boxer's team. Uh, great saves from him, came out strong, actually made some good saves against um, the boxer's number one goal scorer, Lou, uh, Mr. Texero over there, but um, he just got to keep on going and keep on working hard like he's been doing, and hopefully St. John's offensive players will start turning the turmoil and getting the mojo flowing. It absolutely is worth mentioning that St. John's is the home team in this matchup, even though we're playing on Brockton's home field. So Brockton is wearing their away black jerseys with red and white trim. The Eagles, on the other hand, in their home whites with blue and black trim. Oh. And the scoreboard listing boxers as the guest Whereas where it says boxers on the scoreboard is the St. John's Eagles goose egg. Yeah. <laughs> I said it's, it's more, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting how the MIA plays out, out these rules, and it's interesting with the teams that make it this far. Um, you know, I think, it's, uh, I think it's awesome that the boxers got up this far. At least this team um, believed in themselves in making it this far, and they're just fortunate to go ahead and play in front of their, their home crowd, even though they're away. They're still playing for the home crowd. You know, it kind of reminds me of um, a lot of the United States soccer's men team <laughs> when they go out to these places in, like, San Diego or near Texas and everything. Ooh, nice pass. Excellent filter through. And, like I said, they, they play against Mexico. If they play against Mexico and Texas, believe me, it's a very heavenly, heavy, heavy, heavy. Mexican fan base out there, so a lot of, <laughs> I mean, it's unfortunate, but that's the, the way it is in soccer. Well, the other game, the only other game in this bracket, Long Meadow versus Marlboro, is tied at halftime, 0-0. Zero to zero. Interesting. And what was the teams ranked on that on Marlboro and, um, and Long Have Meadow? to do some deep Digging in that one. <laughs> oh, you get paid enough, Matt Dog. <laughs> that was a great job from defense of Broughton. Go ahead and winning it. Nice. Now we're going ahead and counterattack. Quick counterattack on the boxes coming against St. John's Prep. Nice, nice running down the line. Clearance from St. John's out of the, out of their danger zone. Marlboro is 14-1 in three. Oh. They're the number two seed in the Central Division bracket. And St. John's pressuring here. Excellent breakup by the Boxers midfielders. Oh, jeez. Uh. Longmeadow on the other side. 14. 2 and 2. Also the number 2 seed in the West Division bracket. Longmeadow defeating West Springfield in the final. Two to one in penalty kicks. And they were the what number? Uh, both uh, both Longmeadow and Marlboro are number two seats wow. in their respective brackets. So Brockton would be, or St. John's for that matter, would be the number of uh, the home team in the state final. Interesting. Uh, two number two teams are facing each other <laughs> in the semifinal states. And, and uh, two number one seeds. And two number one seeds. This one filtered through but cleared out by Derek Depina. Not out of trouble just yet. And St. John's regains composure and possession in the boxers. And this one kind of spun in and cleared out by Depina. It will be a corner kick for the Eagles. And now the St. John crowd getting loud and getting ready. Cheering on their home team right now. Short kick is trying to set it up, and 
very unsuccessful in their effort were the Eagles. Ah, bad first touch. And St. John's kicking it out of bounds, not. We'll say it's a bold strategy. <laughs> oh, you just didn't know what to do. You just wanted to clear the ball off and stop the quick counterattack that um, number nine was giving him on that um, Jonathan Rodriguez, giving him a lot of pressure out there. And um, he just wanted to stop and slow it down. Brockton with the majority of opportunities in this game. This will be a throw in for the boxers. So far, I haven't, um, haven't heard so much on the goal scorer on, um, for St. John's right now. It's at number nine, Steven uh, Yakita. Yakita has gone 18 straight games with a goal. A very deep throw is picked off by Buckley. Jalen DeRosa with a good set of arms. Now it's a foot race. It's going to be won by Brockton. It was Paulo Romalo able to get it to Mascarenas. Now all the way up. Off to Junior Gomes. Gomes stopping, slipping. Regaining it now with some room. Into the middle a shot and another save by Buckley. That was a great job by Buckley just holding his position. A little slip from Gomes in the outside. He needs to keep his his balance when he does that move. If he would have kept his balance, it would have been a nice, clear open shot in the 18. Uh, not sure if weather played a factor of that. Um, it's definitely nice outside today. A little bit cold, but other than that, the air's not too wet or dry as can tend to happen as we get into the winter month. Mm. This one gonna be on sides and across is going to be cleared out by Brockton. Both teams absolutely earning the right to fight here for a chance to win the state title. St. John's again defeating Newton North in their first round matchup 4-1. to one. Medford in their second round matchup 4 nothing. Mm. And the semis up north, it was St. John's 3-1 to one over Framingham. And one nothing win over Brookline in which the Eagles goalkeeper, Cam Buckley, was injured. And it's his younger brother, Christian Buckley, who has been just phenomenal in net for St. John's tonight. Yeah, Christian Buckley's playing out excellent. Um, the way he's playing, I, I'm, I'm sure that if Cam was their number one starting keeper, that Cam and him are... That's scary. <laughs> yeah, very That's good That's very keeper. scary. Free kick from very dangerous position, but a bad angle. It's going to be taken by Brian Brennan. A two-man boxer wall about 10 yards out. This one sent in and out the other sides. I think we have an offsides call. Oh, it went, out. Uh, went out of bounds in the... Uh... Went out and it'll be a goal kick for the boxers. The boxers, on the other hand, running the table in the south is Brendan Gomes is going to come in. And Andrew Dombowski, who earned a yellow card in the first half, it's going to be coming in. Is in for the Eagles. So Brockton starting off their tournament run with an 8-1 to one win over Marshfield. A 6-1 to one win over King Phillip in the quarterfinals. And a 4-1 to one win over the Silver, Silver Lake Lakers. Mm. And then Common Sense would say the final score of the Division One South final would have been 2-1 to one boxers. That was not the case. A hard-fought one nothing victory over the Needham Rockets at Whitman Hanson High. This one is going to be a free kick for the Ro uh, the Eagles, excuse me. Mm. In conversation with the boxer, I think that was Derek Depina committing the foul and a St. John's free kick from about 40 yards out from net. The referee's not gonna have that much conversations with these boxers right now. They've been having about the first 10 minutes in the game, well, is past 10 minutes, boxers already get three. Andrade all the way out, it's loose, and sent just wide by the Eagles. I think that they're gonna call an offsides on that against St. John's, so the boxer kick will come from about 15 or so yards from net. Oh, no. well, offsides is the word that 
plagued the boxers in the south sectional final against Needham. 11 of them in the game, 5 within a 15 minute span. Not so much of an issue tonight. No, no. Box has been um, very disciplined in getting back. And uh, Texera's looking like he's uh, been working really hard. Um, probably learned from his mistakes on Saturday, and now he's uh, trying to make a correction uh, today. Seems like the table has turned, and St. John's has been getting offsides more. And Gomes is going to earn a card for a trip here. It is going to be a card for Junior Gomes. No, number 13. And St. John's is calling that it should be a red card. And St. John's coach, David Crowell, is absolutely laying into the refs, as is pretty much the entire bench of St. John's. So Gomes is going to come off. Well, let's see what the boxers does right now. I mean, they what they need to do is, you know, clear this ball out and try to do a quick counterattack. They have one defender in, in the back. If they can get a quick counterattack on St. John's Prep, that would be a very positive thing. Um, the first thing, though, they need to make this save. They need to go ahead and clear this ball out of their danger area. Well, Gomes hasn't been sent off. He's still on the pitch. He's talking with the official. And now Junior Gomes is going to be sent off the goal scorer with the game winner from the Needham game. Daniel Andrade is on in Gomes' place. Brought in substitution number 24, Daniel Andrade. I'm not sure that that deserved a card, but well, the the thing is is that Brockton gave three three fouls in a ten minute span and the referee gave three verbal warnings. I knew that the next foul was gonna be a yellow card because now he's trying to enforce that hey listen boxers I'm on you I'm on you just like I'm on St. John. You have to go ahead and start playing the game fair and let's get this chippiness out of the way. Well, the word of the night for Coach Furtado was consistency. Yes. And to the ref's credit, they have been consistent. Very consistent. This one is sent through the football uprights. Field goal is good. Counted three for the boxers. 27 minutes to go in the second half. Brockton hanging on to that one to nothing lead over St. John's Prep. The winner of this game again will face either Longmeadow or Marlboro. A good one shaping up at Westfield State University. That one was scoreless going into the half. And for Brockton, it's been a couple of deep postseason runs in the last couple of years. Of course, two years ago, facing off against Lincoln Sudbury Oh, great job on defense right there. Ooh. Now taken down. And another conversation. Oh, yes. And this is going to be a card. Another one. And this is going to be an ejection for Andrew Dombowski, who just earned his second card. No, he didn't get a card. 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 You got to give a physical. They stopped the clock with gusto. The, the ref throwing his hands up in the air. Stopped the clock. I think these referees got to cut out for them today. And if Dombowski earned a card right there, it would be St. John's third of the night. One more would have resulted in a forfeit for the Eagles. Yeah. We remind you that MIAA rules state four cards in a game results in a forfeit. Playoffs or not. St. John's already with two, almost with a third there for Andrew Dombowski. Two cards for a player, of course, results and in a red yes. and an ejection and a suspension from the next game. And a, actually a suspension from school. And a suspension from school? A suspension from school is what I've, I've heard. 
15 minutes into the second half, and Brockton is hanging on to that one nothing lead. And this game is getting fairly chippy. The referee is doing their best to try to get it under control. And now sent Ooh. up and offsides. Uh, I don't know about that one. That was the uh, same thing that the goal, the referee did on St. John's. Same thing that he, when he when the ball was kicked, he was in an offside position, and then he put himself into an onside position. You got to be in an onside position first. I think um, we just need to go ahead and talk to uh, the athletic director and see if he can get some goal line. Um, yeah, cameras. goal line FIFA technology. <laughs> the difference in this game could very well be the what I'm calling a goal that wasn't a goal is this one is popped up. And Brockton's going to be able to clear it back towards midfield. I think it was Texero in front had the opportunity. Buckley made another phenomenal save but was not able to hold on to it. It bounced backwards towards the goal line. Buckley quickly dove back and pulled it in. But I think it went across the line. Uh, I don't think we ever know. Um, I know. I know other athletic directors are trying to go ahead and get those goal line technologies. I'm sure ours, ours will. In the other game of this bracket, Marlboro out shooting Longmeadow four to one in the second half, but still scoreless. Still zero zero out at Westfield State. The winner of that game will face off against the winner of this game for the Division One state title. It was Brockton upset here at Marciano Stadium two years ago against Lincoln Sudbury. They would love, love to get to Worcester State University. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was very tough for Brockton to lose two years ago against Lincoln Sudbury. But, um, you know, this one thing, this team right here, it has something different from the team they had two years ago. They they know each other a little bit better. They know that they got to keep the ball down on the ground. And when it's ready to go ahead and get served up in the air, um, then they go ahead and, and do that. But they like to keep the ball on the ground and, and keep the ball passing with each other which is an, a good thing to do. Well, Brockton has put up a lot of goals in this tournament. 14 goals through two games. 18 through three games. And then it's slowed down tremendously. Oh, that ball just went over the Just completely. went completely out of the stadium. 14, Ethan Ambrose. Number ball. 16, John Campbell. Ball completely went out of the stadium. St. Jones has had some decent pressure here in the second half, but Brockton has been able to answer it. And here's a little chip shot, a little cross-type deal into the box, broken up by the boxer defense, not out of trouble yet. It'll be St. John's throw-in. Brockton popping it up to give them time to reset their defense. It's loose, and it's going to be shanked by the Johns, St. John's. And a goal for the Eagles. There's a scrum out in front. Andrade is still down. There's another boxer down in net. But St. John's has tied this game as there's a little bit of mayhem in the boxer's box. I think it's credited to number 10, Brian Brennan. It's kind of like the same goal that the Brockton boxer scored in uh, the uh, first half. Ball just came in, bounced up, and then uh, he just toe poked it right past the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper came out, didn't know what he was doing out there. He, he ran into a player, his own player, trying to save the ball. He should have called him off and let him know that, hey, you know, I'm coming out there to get it. Um, but uh, it was just a miscommunication from the boxers, and uh, they need to clean it up. Uh, St. John's capitalized on the boxers' mistakes, and now they're now they're playing um, a tie game again. So it's Brian Brennan with 
the... That's a timeout. Timeout called down the field by Brock. Timeout call from Brock. Great timeout. Good timeout from Coach Arminio. Needs Coach Furtado calling the timeout. He's going to get his players back in order. This one has been a chippy second half. Very physical. Brockton came out shooting. Buckley has made more tremendous saves. Mm -hmm. He's been the rock in net all night for the Eagles. This game... This game's a blowout if you don't have Buckley putting up the game that he is. Yeah, Buckley's playing great for uh, for uh, St. John's Prep. And uh, I think and Fabio Andre is playing great for the Brockton Boxers as well, too. A little mistake that he had over there, but, uh, you know, he's playing excellent as well, too. And, you know, Boxers, what they need to do is just, you know, keep on shooting, like you said. Keep on shooting, and, and hopefully they'll open the floodgates against Buckley. Well, we are two seconds shy of exactly halfway through this second half. It's now one to one in the state semifinal. It's Brian Brennan and Leonardo Texera, the two goal scorers. And St. John's is very fired up on their bench on their side of the stands. And they look ready for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, St. John's are not going to give up. And um, the boxers should not give up as well, too. They need to go ahead and get a little bit of communication going on and clean it up a little bit, clean up their act. Well, this one has been a 15-round heavyweight battle. Throwing haymakers all night for the boxers and answering very nicely was Christian Buckley. Mm. Now the St. John's Eagles scoring a knockdown. Brockton's defense able to bring them back up. Uh, I see miscommunication again with the boxes. They're not talking. Not move, they're not doing what they usually do. They're getting pressured and they're getting a little too excited and a little nervous. Well, it was this way against Needham, a very closely competitive matchup down at Whitman Hanson in the South Final. Very evenly matched here tonight for these two teams, the Eagles and the Boxers, and now St. John's Prep with a shot that's going to not be on net. Again, bad St. First John's touches. pressuring something awful right now. Yeah, bad first touches from the Boxers right now. They're not... They're not doing a great job doing the first touches. That was a great ball. It's going to be a box to throw in. Boxer throwing DeRosa with a no. low throw, and it might have slipped out of his hands. It's a good job, but you, you pass it to someone. Right now, Boxer's is just kicking the ball around, trying to get the ball out of the area. They should keep it, keep calm, and try to get the ball and keep possession of it. I almost wish Coach Arminio could call a second time out here. <laughs> yeah, well, the only time they're going to get another talk is if uh, St. John's calls a timeout. And um, the coach doesn't look like he's going to have any timeouts anytime soon right now. He knows he has the momentum. He knows he has uh, the boxes on their heels right now. So he's definitely going to go, you know, keep on going with the flow. Free kick for the Eagles from about 25 yards out from net. 17.25 left to go in regulation. A little chip shot headed out by Fox's defense, and now it is Texera. No, it's Edson Lopes rushing up ahead. He's pushed off the ball, and it's going to be a boxer free kick. St. John's crowd and bench disagreeing with the call. Very clearly, Edson Lopes was spun around on that play. Hmm. <laughs> it's going to be no easy uh, easy goals over here. No easy goals. It's 
with a free kick, and it's going to be taken by Odair Montero. Montero with a low kick that is kicked right out by the St. Jones Eagles. Take some ketchup. So it's all tied up with about 16 minutes to go in regulation. regulation. I guess we have to say at this point. Yeah. Two very evenly matched games in the state semis as Marlboro and Longmeadow are still scoreless. Out of Westfield State University in the We'll call it the Western Mass Final. Yeah. Now sent up ahead and Brockton with an opportunity. It's going to go over the end line and it will be a goal kick for the Eagles. Brockton calling for a corner. The referee's calling it. Oh. And now it's going to be a corner. Assistant referee called the right call. He just told the referee he missed that uh, look and he had a better looking angle and the middle referee agreed with him. He said, okay, buddy. This could be the game right here, Roberto, as Montero has moved in to take the corner on the far side. Curving it out towards midfield. Good place, kick deflected and loose, and St. John's is going to clear it out. It'll be a throw-in. Mm. All signs point to Jalen DeRosa taking this throw-in for the boxers. Derek DePina is going to move up and take it. There's been three yellow cards in this game, two for St. John's and one for the boxers. Junior Gomes is the oh, great job. boxer as Buckley steps up and pulls this one out. That was a great save by Buckley. Now it's Lopes who is banged into, no call. Now Spinola shoving off his man. And a call against the boxers here. The crowds are getting into these calls now, huh? Jeez. <laughs> Crowd is thinned out a bit as the temperature continues to drop. Still very, very big crowd for both sides here. Mascarenas clearing this one but not out, and the shot is going to barely get through to Fabio Andrade, who sends it back across midfield. That's a great kick. Oh, Texera taking the ball now. Texera, the goal scorer for the boxers. Well, it seems like a long time ago. <laughs> you standing up, Mad Dog, makes me want to stand up right now. <laughs> uh, Tapina shanking the throw in. No harm, no foul for the boxers who still have possession now. St. John's able to clear it out with 12.50 remaining in regulation. We're not going to say the O word. No, no. Not no, going to no. say those wonderful two letters that happen after the O word. <laughs> Thrown for the boxers. This one more on track. And this will result in a St. John's thrown on the far side with 12 and a half to go. Mitch Collins and Sam Smith into the game for the Eagles. Both of these teams senior heavy. Mm. 13 seniors for the Eagles. Seven of those started this game tonight. Oh, great turn from St. John. Nice job. Nice job from Brockton to go ahead and taking the ball away. For the boxers, it's 16 seniors, three of which are their goalkeepers. Now, St. John's player is spun around. Now, 
we're going to continue play. So the ref goes over to Gomes to have a little conversation, not much there. And Brockton comes away with possession. Spinola sending it up oh. over the head of Texera, and it's going to go out the far side, and it'll be a goal kick for St. John's. That was a great job. Nice luck on Tex for Texera. It's just a little too high for him. A little too high. You know, the boxer has to go ahead and calm down and get uh, make sure that their mind's right. Um, Spinola went in there a little hard on um, who was it, number two. Uh, Andrew Dubowski, he got a little hard Edson on him. Lopes, excellent first touch. Can Rodriguez get a shot off? He can a shot, and it's punched out by Buckley, and he's able to pounce on the rebound and throw it back out. You talk about a game that has lived up to the hype, lived up to the expectations. Two number one seeds, the undefeated St. John's Prep, and the Brockton Boxers that almost went undefeated, the, the one loss on their record. In the last game of the regular season, a 2-1 to one loss against big three divisional rival, the New Bedford Whalers. This one is turning into a classic. Mm. This one's coming out pretty well. I think this is going to be the new rival whenever they see each other again. St. John's Prep versus Brockton. It was a good little rival when they had them in football. And now, now they switch over and convert it into soccer now. Interesting note from the other game in the bracket. Marlboro scored, but the goal was called back as the player was ruled to be offsides off of a rebound. So that game remains scoreless late in the second half out at Westfield State University. I want to take this opportunity to thank our probably at this point frozen cameraman as Junior Gomes steps up. And it's going to be a call against the boxers. Two players hit the turf. And Coach Arminio <laughs> Frittato went over to the down players. And the ref said, get back, get back. It's going to be a Brockton free kick here. Yeah, the St. John's front player got beaten. Uh, he just took out uh, Texera. It's uh, going to be a chippy game. This indirect kick to be taken by Derek DePina. Let's see what they can do. Good ball, and Buckley picks it out of thin air again. Now I'm going to call it right now. The game ball MVP of this game is Christian Buckley, the goalkeeper of the St. John's Prep Eagles. Not definitely. I, I think <laughs> he's been stepping up big time for them. And... Um, kept them in the game and now um, they have an opportunity to go ahead and try to win this game. Now push off against St. John's. It is number two Andrew Dembowski who already has a yellow card and the St. John's referees in attendance don't agree with that call. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a little chippy foul. A little chippy foul but you know it does. A boxer collided with the referee's shoulder and went down. So the bodies have started to fly everywhere here. Brockton is going to come away with a free kick. Some subs coming in. Substitution, Reven Rodriguez coming in. Reven Rodriguez, very offense-minded. He scored a few goals this season in this postseason. Yep. A yellow think. card to the St. John's bench. Or the coach, specifically. Coach David Crowell has earned the third red card, uh, third yellow card of the night for the Eagles. One of the assistants on St. John's bench earning the yellow card. That's three. So it's 7:45 to go. If St. John's gets another yellow card, they forfeit. Technically, yes, they forfeit the game. And it would be a shame to see a classic such as this end that way. Not saying it wouldn't be deserved, but this one is loose. Oh, the PK and inside PK the box. for Brockton. A foul called against the Eagles inside the box. And Jonathan Rodriguez, no doubt, is going to be the boxer taking it. 
and he's going to have an opportunity to give the, the box. boxers the lead here with 7.15 to go. And St. John's Time. captain is going to get into it with the official. Now, if Buckley does... <laughs> If uh, Buckley does save this, he's definitely getting the game-winning ball, regardless of what the score Odair Montero taking it for the boxers. It's him and Christian Buckley. And Odair Montero scores for the boxers. And Brockton has a 2-1 lead with seven minutes to go in the second half. Well, PKs are pretty easy to call, but what did you see that resulted in the opportunity Dad. for Brockton. Well, <laughs> that right there, to be honest with you, I didn't really see, I didn't see anything. Maybe the referee seen a handball inside the box. Maybe he's seen a foul, a push from back from St. John's. I mean, if it was a foul from St. John's, I wouldn't blame it because they've been doing a lot of fouls, dumb, stupid fouls um, to the Brockton boxes, and, you know, the referee's just having enough. Enough is enough. So it's a St. John's goal, uh, St. John's possession here as a angry St. John's parent has come up has come up to yell at the press box for clock error. I mean, there's only a couple seconds between the time that the clock started. I guess this, this parent doesn't understand that official time is kept on the field by the referees and the scoreboard is just for reference. Now that's going to be a free kick for the Eagles from a bad angle. Sent in, cleared out by Brockton, and it will be a St. John's throw in now with just under six minutes to go. And another save by Fabio Andrade. That was a great job. Nice save. Foul called against the boxers. A little ticky foul right there. It's the boxer fan base starting to get into it. Time winding down. About five minutes to go. Now in the second half. It is two to one boxers over the St. John's Prep Eagles and 15 round heavyweight battle in Brockton three on two up turf sent to the outside for Edson Lopes can Lopes get to it yes but it's tackled slid out by the St. John's defense Brockton is back the other way from about 40 yards back the two goal scorers for Brockton Leonardo Texera and Odair Montero the lone goal scorer for the Eagles is Brian Brennan. Brockton with an opportunity here. A shot and an excellent save by Buckley. Good job from Reven. Just take it off to the corner and waste some time. It's one thing though, St. John's is going out there to keep on putting pressure on the Brockton boxes. They're not giving up on the on the play. Free kick for the boxers who are taking their sweet time. And you can hear the crowd getting crazy right now. A little preemptive, but no harm or no foul. The crowd can never hurt the boxers. <laughs> Three and a half to go. Junior Gomes with a direct kick, and it's saved by Buckley. Three and a half minutes to go. Two to one, boxers. 
and a timeout being called for by the St. John's bench not being given as of yet and Brockton in with another opportunity this one's going to be a boxer throwing now three minutes to go and a wild finish shaping up here Roberto Yes, a very wild finish, and now it's a timeout from St. John's Prep. Now the timeout, timeout is granted. So the winner of this game moves on to face either Marlboro or Longmeadow. That game's still scoreless out at Westfield State. With time winding down, that game Saturday evening around 6 o'clock, either at Worcester State University or Fitchburg State University, one would guess it would be in Worcester. But you never know with the MIAA. Roberto, with time winding down, talk about the Boxers postseason run. Talk about the magic of this team. Talk about <laughs> what makes this Boxers team this Boxers team. Well, this Boxers team has been uh, very unique and very big uh, and this year um, with the style of play that they brought and with Coach uh, Furtado coming in here, speaking the Cape Verdean language with uh, with the kids, they they really connected very well. And this season had came out very strong for them. Broughton really had a, a very slump season a couple of times with the soccer. And uh, he just picked it right back up. And one thing, like I said in the beginning in this, when I started sports commentating, is that Furtado came out there with a different expectation than a lot of other coaches did in the past. He really cared about the kids' education. He really cared about the kids as individuals, not just as soccer players for the Broughton High School, but, you know, really giving that extra time for these kids that have difficult of uh, learning how to speak English or trying to get their education in there. And he was there and gave them instruction and, they gave, and gave them discipline in order to go ahead and achieve what they needed to achieve. So this is the difference. This is what's making the difference in this Broughton team. And this run, <laughs> it's just an amazing run right now. They have hope. They have, you know, a lot of fan base. I'm sure there's going to be probably a little bit more than this in, at the at the state final. So, you know, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting. Brockton with it in the box. An opportunity to shot oh. off the post. Uh, oh, Brendan it came Gomes. off the bar. There's no? Who is it? More than one person up here that <laughs> thought that one and went in and just rebounded straight out off of the back of the net. Spinola over there with the Odair oh uh, Montero effect. <laughs> now it's Gomes sending it through, and St. John's is going to break it up. No offsides called, but Brockton able to regain possession and fighting for it as he's sliding to the turf. About 15 seconds before the two minutes. It's two to one boxers in what has been a classic one here. The one asterisk on that is that St. John's has three yellow cards. If they earn another one in the next two or so minutes, they will forfeit this game. And Brockton will move on regardless of the score. Yeah, and, uh, you know... A shot and oh. off the post again. Two posts in about 45 seconds for the boxers. It's a great shot. And Brockton has had all the pressure lately, and this is going to be no call here. As St. John's is now pressuring, trying to get the equalizer, and time winds down and stoppage time. Throw in for the Eagles. Short throw is trying to get some offense set up. And St. John's will have another throw in now. Maybe about a minute and a half to go. St. John's, you can see, is getting more desperate as the minutes go on. This one loose and it's deflected out and knocked up high by the boxer's defense. And it's excellent work there. It was that Jonathan Gomes to waste some time off the clock and get it out close to midfield. St. John's with a quick restart and a terrible throw to 
right to the foot of one of the boxers. St. John still with it though as Brockton steps up to its defensive pressure. This one out of play and it'll be a goal kick for the boxers and I'm sure Fabio Andrade is going to take his time with this one. Roberto, this one has been a doozy. A very competitive game. It was tied for a majority of it. You got the feeling when Brockton scored they had all the momentum in their first goal that the floodgates were going to open. St. John's able to answer, and then since then, it's been back and forth. Mm. Yeah, well, St. John's has not given up. They're a good team. They're number one team in their division, and they're in their respected division. And, uh, you know, I knew that it was going to come close game on this one. Uh, boxes just lucked out on a, a couple things, and uh, it's just a lot of, you know, what it is. The reason why it's 2-1 right now is that St. John's is very undisciplined, and they got the boxers got underneath their skin, and and this is the result of what happens when you don't keep your calm, keep your composure. <laughs> Andra sending this one out towards midfield. St. John's heading it back towards the boxer net. Brockton taking it right back as time winds down here. Quick update in the other game. Still scoreless. Under two minutes to go out at Westfield State between Longmeadow and Marlboro to determine who will face one of these two teams in the state final on Saturday. And if everything holds true here, it'll be the Brockton Boxers traveling to either Worcester or Fitchburg. One of those two places. It'll be maybe about 30 seconds left here in regulation. As Brockton... And that's it. Is going to win, and Brockton and comes away with the victory. St. John's is upset the top-seeded team in the tournament. And here's the scoring summary for Brockton. It was Leonardo Texera with the icebreaker. About 15 minutes left in the first half, and then answering for the Eagles was Brian Brennan. The difference in this one is the penalty kick that was taken by Odair Montero. And Roberto, this one, a classic. Four yellow cards, but let's not talk about those right now. Classic matchup, very highly competitive game here between the Eagles and the Boxers. What did you see that ultimately was the difference in this game? <laughs> Composure, that's what I've seen in this game. Composure is what? Uh, you should say that to the MIAA, sir. Composure is definitely is one of the things that um, that um, that the boxers had and that the St. John Preps team didn't have. Uh, they got out of the element of play. The boxers were outplaying them, and instead of getting, you know, composed and everything, they just... You know, lost their temper. They lost their cool. They got three yellow cards. You know, one of the one of them came from the coaches. Two of them came from the players. And it's just you know, in this type of env environment, in this type of level, in this in this type of stage that you're in right now, composure plays a lot. And if you don't have that, then you're not going to go ahead very far in these type of games in these situations. Well, Roberto, one of the St. John's parents just came up to the press box screaming that this game wasn't fair because Brockton got to host it even though they're the away team. Let's get your quick thoughts on that. Hey, listen, if any of you St. John preps fans uh, disagree on what happened, you know, contact the MIAA. They're the one that made these as a neutral site. It's not our fault that the Brockton boys worked really hard to get to exactly where they're supposed to get to. It was just very fortunate that they actually hit this number. Uh, they hit this place. Two to one final score, Roberto. You're facing either Longmeadow or Marlboro on Saturday. We still don't know. If you're the boxers, what do you do to prepare for the unknown? Two teams we know absolutely nothing about. Well, the first thing, coach better get on his uh, iPad and uh, or his computer at home and take some looks and see how the either either or whichever team see how they um, their schedule was and how they did in their regular season and especially um, having a very long stretch now they got Wednesday Thursday Friday to go ahead and relax you know definitely do some game filming and game times for for you know the boxers to make sure that these guys are mentally prepared and physically prepared for uh, what could be a very cold night over there in Worcester. Roberto, your final thoughts on this game? Great game from the boxers, keeping their composure. And uh, St. John's, congratulations for making this this far. But uh, 
unfortunately, your journey ends here. Two to one, the final score. The Brockton Boxers moving on to the state finals against either Long, Mod Long Meadow, excuse me, or Marlboro. That game either at Worcester State or Fitchburg State on Saturday evening. Check our Twitter at the Brockton Channel for updates on that one. Brockton with a big victory over St. John's Prep. Two to one, the final score from Marciano Stadium for everyone here at Brockton Community Access. Our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, hey. my broadcast partner, Roberto Neves. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and hey, we'll see you in the finals. Goodbye.